So welcome back. Nana here and then we are into the final session of this uh, fusion uh, procurement implementation. Three more topics are pending. Uh, one is uh, uh, retroactive pricing. <coughs> the second one is a PO import. The third one is a supplier import. So let's go ahead and then do it now. In the meantime, what happens, we'll now go on and again check on that uh, one that has now run the review accounting distribution because sometimes what happens, it takes some time uh, basically to, for the things to settle actually. Because yesterday it was failing actually. We'll now see again whether it works today or not. <clears throat> so go to the supply chain mechanism and then go to the cost accounting and then let me do the uh, again submit the review now. Uh, submit the create accounting, create distribution supply, create cost accounting distribution. So let me create it again now. So it starts with the K99 and then click on search now. So go there and then click on the scheduled process straight away because we have given what the cutoff date is 13th now. So today is 14th, so let me give uh, what happens. The date is what? 20th. So I will not, maybe the date might have caused the problem or not. I'm not very sure about it. So I'll now give it 15th as a date now. And cutoff date is now 15. <coughs> And give a save now <clears throat> and then uh, click on the schedule because something has gone wrong actually. I don't know what is it. So, okay, now, okay. now the scheduled concurrent is now running now, it will not take around two minutes time. You go to the it's called the tools and then go to the schedule process and have all right now. So, cost accounting distribution is running now. So once when it gets completed, you can now see this. In the meantime, we will now start the retroactive pricing activity now. Right click on the duplicate. You go to the procurement and then you go to the purchase orders. And then let us now go and then create an agreement actually. I'm now going to create an agreement. Click on it. And then I'll now put the create agreement now. Let me get an agreement for an item now. So supplier is K99. I'll put sub two on this now. Sub two. So it's a blanket purchase agreement I'm going to create now. If I click on create. So we are in the process of creating a blanket agreement. So go down and then I'm now putting an amount agreed. Okay. Some huge amount now. And I'm not giving any MR on the term on the the term on the main button as well as in the lines also I'm not going to give any MR that we already seen now. And then click on plus now. Let me add an item. <coughs> for this item is K99 underscore cost underscore test now. Go there. <coughs> I will not give here we cannot give any quantity at all. I don't know. So this is what is the price I will not make a change to 10 now. So we cannot give any quantity on this now. <clears throat> and then I know expiration date also I'm not giving anything. So go there, select it and then here I will not click on edit now. On the line level, I'm going to edit now. So here uh, he is not going to give a price discount now. Fine, click on plus now, fine, he is not giving a discount. So let us now go there. Ship to organization is a K991 and then the location is a K99 underscore log underscore one. Now. For this location, if you buy more than 100 quantities, he is now giving a discount of let us say 10 percent now. So I'm going to do 10% and then if you give a back tap, you can now see the price gets changed. And then a price break type is cumulative fine. Remember, if you are going for a retroactive pricing, cumulative will not work at all. Fine. Cumulative pricing is what? It is now going to work on even the previous purchases actually. Fine. So if you want retroactive pricing to be enabled, then it must be non-cumulative. Only for non-cumulative price breaks, it will work. Remember, fine. For the cumulative, it will not work. Retroactive will not work. Because tomorrow, the supplier is now going to give additional discount. Let us say <clears throat> that discounts will be done only on a non cumulative basis and not on the cumulative basis, actually. That is for each and every line, it will be compared. So, non cumulative only will be given. So, he is now offering a 10% discount, and tomorrow he says that I will now offer a 20% discount even on all the open orders, it will all be getting percolated automatically. So, it will be non cumulative. I am now giving it fine. Go there, click on OK, and then I will go there, go to the terms area. <coughs> So you go to the contact controls now, and the controls, I'm going to enable the retract pricing. 
So initiate the process upon agreement approval. Fine, initiating it, and then replace the open orders only. Fine, it is a closed. You don't initiate the approval. So initiate the change actually. So we are not enabling it. Fine, all the things are enabled actually, and you are safe. And then we are not going to submit it. <clears throat> so here in the retract basically everything has been enabled. Fine, you can submit. It is almost similar to what we have in Ebus, but Ebus has got an excellent enhancement. But it must be available here also. I don't know how to do that now. Fine, you will now give the exercise to Vignesh now. Click on it. So 2004 is the one. In the meantime, 2004 is the agreement. So let us go there and then have a look at the monitor process now. <clears throat> uh, it has now completed again the warning. We'll now go and then have a look at the save and close and then have a look at the distributions again now. Click on it. I'll not review the uh, cost accounting distributions now. <clears throat> go there. Cost organization starts with our item. I'm going to put it in the So it's a key and because there are plenty of items are there. So I'm now querying it on the item now. So item is the one is okay. Fine, click on search now. Now it has to be accounted actually. Whether uh, the distribution should have been made now, actually. So it's since saying is not closed. At least what happens the adjustments is not coming as fully costed now. Adjustment is coming fully costed. But here this receipt is not processed at all. So Vignesh, when you make an R and D, fine, tell us where exactly we have gone wrong on this now. Fine. So somewhere something is wrong because of which whatever is not processed at all. Okay, leave it down. So you go there and then 2004 is the agreement number. Fine, go there, click on it and then go to the manager agreements and then have a look at it now. 2004 is the one. <clears throat> 2004 and then click on search now. So you can, it's open now. <clears throat> so we have a price of 10 and then if you buy more than 100, what happens, you'll be getting a price of 100 and, and 9 actually. Now against which we will now make what? Yeah, standard purchase order. Fine, go there, click on it. And then you go to the what's called create orders. In EBIS, we can very well reference a document now. Here, the referencing is automatic. K99. Referencing is automatic. Now go to the sub tool now. So I'm now making a standard purchase order. I click on create now. So the moment I put an item, the system picks up the agreement automatically. The agreement gets picked up automatically. Click on it. And then click on plus. <clears throat> item is K99 underscore. Cost underscore. Test now. So I will now go for one not one quantities. Now. You can now see the agreement is already referenced now. When if you give a tap, the price will automatically come to nine actually. And the price is now coming as nine now. You know, click on it. And then I will now go to the schedules and then let me approve it now. <clears throat> so the price has come to nine. Click on it. And you say today's date now. Go there and then click on save and then submit it. So 3026 against 2004 is now getting submitted. And this is not possible in there. Rather, EB is also it's possible. The agreement will be automatically referenced. Even if you don't put it, it will be referencing there also. And you can force reference also in EBS. But here, it is only automatic referencing is possible. We cannot make a change on this agreement. Click on submit now. So 3026 is now submitted for approval against 2004. It will not take some time to what happens there. Do it now. <clears throat> so you will go there and then go to the manage orders now. And then have a look at it. So two, three zero two six is the one. So it will be going to open now. Fine, pending approval is coming. So we have not kept it as not automatic approval. So it has to show me this now. <clears throat> Still not developing it actually. Go back on level. Oh, it's completely out. Go to the purchase orders. You go there, go to the manage orders. 3026. And then I click on search. It is open. Now, on seeing our uh, frequent ones, the supplier is now giving more discounts. Now. I click on that now. He's now giving more discounts. We'll now go there. We are going to make a modification of this. I will now go to the manage agreements and then query the agreement now. So 2004 is the one. <clears throat> Here, you know, go on and edit it. So, you know, change order now. Fine, <clears throat> he is now offering more discounts. Actually. More discounts, I remember. I know that, and then uh, you go there, and then uh, click on it, and then click on edit now. He is now saying, instead of 10%, I will not give you 20%. Now. So, you go there, you buy more than 100, what happens? It will be 20% discount. So, our see our purchase order is also eligible for this discount now. That. So because we are now ordering 1001 on the 3026 purchase order, fine, on the agreement it has now been changed, fine. 
this will not percolate down to the purchase orders all the open orders it will not percolate now and click on submit so the change order now uh, has been submitted to approval and click on okay now <clears throat> so it is undergoing a change now so if you go there you can now see the change order coming up now fine go to the manage agreements and then go and then query the 2004 and then click on search now fine a change order will be pending now a change order is pending. So click on it. I'm not sure the change order is pending. So once when the change is happening, that will be percolated down to the purchase order also. Click on it. Okay. Now query the purchase order 3026. Now click on it. And then you go to the manage orders. And then query 3026. 3026. And then give a search now. Fine. This will now automatically undergo a change actually. The, the change icon will be coming. The price has to come as 8 actually. Fine. So <coughs> go there. So 101 is a 9 not 9. You click on search now again. <clears throat> so you can watch that what happens it will be undergoing. You see it's already changed, I think. No, it's not changed. 9 not 1 only. So this will undergo a change automatically. <clears throat> oh, you see a change order pending is the icon is coming now. The change order is pending. So wait for the change order to complete. It is now automatically percolating it. In EBIS, we have one functionality. So let us say we have received it and then we have also paid him now. And say so let us say he is asking for excess or he is reducing the price. So the system creates an adjustment invoice now. And I don't know how to do that. I asked financials also. Fine. Nobody is able to guide me actually. I want to you on this now. <clears throat> EBIS has documentation. Go to the purchasing and then order purchasing. I have, I have made it as an, I have made a document also on this now on the retractive pricing. On there, retractive pricing. Yeah, so <coughs> in EBS, that is a fun, fantastic functionality actually. <clears throat> it creates an adjustment invoice actually. So, here, uh, uh, when I was an oracle, I made this document actually. <coughs> Afterwards, what happens when I was a freelancer, I was doing it actually, and then. Uh, <coughs> You can now see here what you can do is we can very well create an adjustment invoice automatically. We can run a concurrent and then that will be creating an adjustment invoice. Here also it will be there, but I don't know how to do it now. Fine, this for the upward revision of PO releases. So uh, there is a profile option also there. So we had to say all releases on this profile option actually. So the profile option is also there now. So, you're fine, huh? uh, so there is a profile option here. So this profile option has to be said, oh, retractive pricing to all releases actually. And then afterwards, I created a, what's called a, a standard, uh, I created a, uh, what's called a blanket, uh, standard purchase order now. I go on a standard purchase order, go there. I have now shown to you on the direct one, fine. Afterwards, what happens, I have now shown you the distribution also. The invoice is created with the initial PO price of 10 or whatever it is now. And then go there. You create a document revision, fine. And I'll make a change of the price actually. Now on the SPO itself, I'm making a change, not on the BPA level, fine with that. So go there, it's not done. And then afterwards, you had to run the retractive price updates of the purchasing documents. This has to be run now. And then once when you run it, you'll not pass on the supplier now. No, click on it. And then it's not done. And then afterwards, create adjustment documents and payables. So what is the equivalent of it, Vignesh? You try to find out. Fine. There is, I don't understand uh, adjustment and all I tried and then uh, there's no such thing coming at all. There's no concurrent coming at all. There, there may be a different name actually. If you run the create adjustment documents in payables, it will be creating what? Another, uh, the PO number has to be passed on in emails now. It runs over here now. And then you can now see, uh, this is running now, fine. Uh, running, and then what happens, the $100. It's called a uh, PPA invoice, actually. <clears throat> fine, it's called a PPA invoice. Uh, yes. uh, tell me. But uh, I have to check, no, no. You make a check now, fine. So this is a PPA invoice. It's a retractive price adjustment, actually, fine. There's a PPA a price adjustment. I don't know what is the first period. So your PPA invoice gets created actually. And then afterwards, what happens if you go there? It is a separate invoice, it's a price adjustment invoice, and then that will begin and then will be uh, basically approved. Mm -hmm. And then it is for the downward price also the similar fashion. Fine. I reduce the price actually from 12.5. I reduce the price over here now. Uh, go there. Everything is done. I reduce the price to 10 now. And then what happens? Uh, 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 the supplier's liability <coughs> will be coming down actually because of this. If you run the create adjustment documents, the payables, it will be coming down. So it's what's called, you can see minus 250. If it is in within brackets, it's minus actually. Anything which is bracket is minus actually. So it will be creating a minus invoice. You can see minus 250 is not getting So this way it works actually. Fine. I don't know how to do that. Fine. Because that may be required. We have to do it. It will be there. But I don't know how to do that actually. <clears throat>
to go there. And you click on search. Now. You can even our time permits. You keep on doing these orange games. Is open now. Now you can now see the prices come down. You go there. And you know, click on that under underscore of this now. You click on it. And look. So you can now see the prices now come to eight actually. So if you have a BPA price and then if the retractive pricing is enabled, it will be communicating to all the open orders. If you remove the tick mark on the open orders, it will be doing it even for the closed orders also. <clears throat> but normally, what happens? You'll not keep it only for the open orders now. So this is on the retroactive pricing. <clears throat> Any doubts on this now? Good, fine. Okay. Fine. Now the next topic will now go. So Guinness has got a lot of things. Uh, uh, this is what why it is not processed. Why my uh, uh, what's called costing is not processed. Uh, and the next yeah. one is what on the retroactive pricing. Uh, you can check the transaction error also in the here also. We already checked it on the day and transaction error. Transaction error. The receipt is the cost. I think we have to create a miscellaneous uh, receipt. No, no, PO receipt is it's a PO receipt actually, huh? Okay. So it's a PO receipt. PO, the receiving uh, side, the receipt accounting has uh, done perfectly with accounting also. Whereas the cost accounting, it is not happening. Receipt accounting okay. is common. With the price of 10, it has really accounted it actually. If any of the lines uh, for this item got stuck, then it will... Uh, the only, there will be one line actually. Uh, receipt accounting succeeded on this line also. Fine. So that can also Everything is now there. So think over it. Fine. You test it and then see. You have succeeded on this accounting. Now, fine. You don't have any problem at all. No? Uh, but I think uh, we have to check from uh, date, the transaction date. Uh -huh. So first transaction date has to be processed. Next only, uh, it will flow like that only. Mm -hmm. So I think that the second line is uh, struck. The second line is a cost adjustment actually. I made a manual adjustment that has got fully costed. Okay, that's cost fully costed. The miscellaneous result, that is a separate one. This is a PO result. Okay. The PO result for the cost accounting is no failing. If there is any setup problem, then even this and this has also has to fail actually. I don't find any setup problem, but it is now saying a strange error now. Why the receipt is missing a cost? How come the receipt will be missing a cost actually? Because there's a BO cost, the receipt cost actually. Mm -hmm. We already given a PO price of 10 now, and that has to be receipt cost. Okay, fine. you just analyze and then if you come across any solutions, uh, please inform everybody now. Yeah, okay. So this is on the retracted pricing, then I will now go for uh, PO import now. So I'll now go for the PO import. So you now go to docs.oracle.com. I'll go for the PO import now. So click on the cloud applications on the left hand side. And then there you go down and then go to the procurement now. Find supply chain management and then go to the procurement. And then in the procurement, what happens? You go there, go to the books now. Find click on the books on the left hand side. And then on the books, you go there and then see on the bottom, <coughs> find development. Under the development, we have the file based data import. Find click on HTML. So here, so many imports are available here. If you click on the purchase, so many things can be imported. The BPA can be imported, CPA can be imported, purchase orders. There are only three documents here now. So I have imported this now, and then the self service procurement, what happens there? We have import requisitions, and then the supplier model, we have got this many imports. My next is the supplier model. So I will now go to the purchase order import now, find whether it has got four tabbed regions now. I've already downloaded, and then I have populated everything. So I will not use that now. You go there, click on it. I will now go there, click on it, and then I'll save it now, actually. <clears throat> Now, uh, what I'll do is I already populated one of them. If you open it up, you can even use the same template and then uh, modify the values basically. That is the best way now. So if you go there, get an interface, you can even modify everything. So I've already done it now. Fine, go there, click on it. Let us now do that now. Fine, go there. So I'm going to minimize it. And then along with the PO import. <clears throat> so PO import the one. So double click on the PO import. PO import the one. Double click on it. <clears throat> so I already populated now. So we have to have an interface key ABC, then original, and then type. And go there, and then go there. So the procurement BU has to be given now. Uh, uh, here in the standard is the document type is the standard point. Drop it down. No see from the standard is available now. So the procurement BU, the requisitioning BU, the legal entity, and then the bill to BU, <coughs> all these things has to be provided on the header level now. Buyer is not required, the system will be picking up the buyer automatically. I no need to give buyer at all. Fine. If you give a different buyer, that buyer will be populated actually. Because we have to know who is the buyer actually. Go there and I can now leave it as you know. I will not say, I will not, it's a second import, I will not write it now. Second import. And the build location, 
and the shift location, the supplier. I have now already created a supplier called Imp Sup One now, and I am now putting this over there now. And then I am now giving it as a site ten actually. I have created a supplier with this site now. And then afterwards, the remaining payment terms is immediate. I put it now. Fine. The immediate for which what happened? The reference data set has already been added now. Otherwise, what happens? It will be giving a problem. So we have to put a reference data set in the immediate also. And then required acknowledgement now. Fine. And then remaining fields you can optionally do it now. And then we have a big requirement on a, what's called a, uh, motor supply too. I don't know. In uh, when we were implementing for Tawasul Telecom in Kuwait, they were putting a lot of notes at the header level as well as the, at the line level. Now, fine. They want everything to come over here. Now, fine. So that was the requirement. And then this is a big, big one now. <clears throat> and then go there and click on it. Fine. I'm not wanting anything. So it is a note to supply. And then I'm now putting an attribute of date. Now, fine. Uh, one date. I have put it now. <clears throat> Uh, 14, 5, I'm going to close it now and then come in. <clears throat> so it has got a reference key of ABC now. Fine. If you go to the next line, fine. The lines now. Header level is there, fine. Go to the lines level. So the ABC is referenced here, and then this uh, tab region has got a ABC1 as an interface key now. Add it, goes, and then go there. Click on it. And then I'm putting a point of 12 now. <clears throat> go there. So click on each and then the price is 3. Let me change the price to 4 now. <clears throat> The price is now changed to four now, and then supplier he is now calling this as this one now. Fine, supplier item two is now calling it. The price has been changed, quantity is now same now. <clears throat> Go for that, and then here nine level note to supplier two, line level note supplier. Fine, go that click on that. Come back. <clears throat> note to receiver is okay, line level uh, note to receiver, uh, but note to supplier was important for us in one of the implementations actually. And given a line level note to receiver also. Uh, have you done any attachment here, uh, Vignesh? Because if you want to have an attachment, I don't know how to do that actually. Where is the field for attachment? Line level attachments? Is there anything? Oh, no, sir. You know, then no report. Because sometimes what happens is they will be asking a certain attachment for every line actually. So all that would be an attachment. But in the case, how to populate the attachment as a, what's called, we had had it, no? I don't know how to. But uh, uh, we didn't add any attachments in any attachment. of the templates. Uh, there is the reason that I don't know where to give it. Now the price has been changed to three years. The previous purchase order was with three. Now I added it to the four. Okay. And then I go to the PO line location interface now. Line location. This is now referenced, and then this is the key for this now. <clears throat> go for that. And the ship location I given now. Uh, amount. Amount is not required. Remember, amount if you put it, it was failing actually. It will now multiply the toll into four and then it will automatically populate the amount. If you put as 48, it's failing or it was failing as well. So amount we have when you made a SR, Oracle told that leave the amount as a blank. Let the system calculate actually. Even though it's correct, but it doesn't allow you fine whether click on it. And then the destination is inventory. Fine. If it is an expense item, we have to make it as an expense now. <clears throat> so it's an inventory. Accrual receipt, we can just leave it as an because inventory is automatically accrual as a receipt only. Allow substitute receipts asset value. <clears throat> There is no attachment column at all. If you happen to see the attachment attribute, fine, tell us now. Then go to the distributions now, fine, fine. PO lines, then PO line locations, and then finally, what happens at PO distributions? Click on the PO distribution now. So the PO distribution again, what happens? The previous one, and the column uh, interface key number now, and distribution is one now. And then if you have any supplemental level distributions or anything like that, I can put it on my quantity stall. So price is only appearing in one, one place now, fine, click on it. And then that's it. <clears throat> So we are now done it. Okay, now we are now. There are four uh, tab regions are there: header interface, then uh, PO line interface, line location interface, and distribution interface. Now we go back. Then here, what happens? We go and I'll click on generate the CSV file now. So once you generate the CSV file in the PO import file, what happens? It'll be showing PO import orders file. Click on save now. For the first tab region is now saved. Next is the headers now, headers, and the next is what lines interface. And click on save now. And then afterwards, line location interface, and then distribution interface. Distribution interface. Click on save now. So it's all done now. Now we have the file. We now have a look at it now. That is it's called a PO uh, import orders. This is a zipped file. If you double click on it, what happens? You cannot see all the four things are there actually. So you go there and then give it back now. So I'm now going to import it actually. Fine, it does not import it. So this is the Excel sheet and then this is a zip file which I'm going to import now. And then I'll go to the application now. Go there and then we're going to import it now. <clears throat> so in the manager orders, thank you for that. I'm going to perform an import now. So let us go there. <clears throat> so go to the tools and then go to the schedule process and then from that what happened? I'm now going to run that load interface file for import now. Load interface file for import. 
Become okay now. So we are running the load interface file by import now. <coughs> and that will now in one go, we will now bring it to the UCM area as well as the interface area and drop it down. And then we will now search for the import process function for such as the import orders actually. Orders. Hello, uh, can you call me after one o'clock? I'm in a I'm meeting actually. No? Okay, call me at one o'clock. So go there, click on search now. So once when you search for it, there's no coming, there's no going click on them and choose it now. <clears throat> and the data file, go there and then upload the data file. Click on the upload a new data file. Click on choose file now. And then there's a zip file, I'm adding it now. Okay. So by which it comes to UCM as well as the interface table in one go now. I click on it and then, uh, oh sorry, what is it? PO import orders, what is the file name? Uh, upload a new file, choose a file. Okay, PO import orders only. Yeah, yeah. Click on okay now. <clears throat> and then I click on submit now. You could input it. So the load interface file is now running now. Once when it is completed, we can even run the import orders uh, concurrent for bringing it from the interface table to the base tables from here itself now. So it is all completed now. So we can even run it. So otherwise, there is one more utility also. Import orders. Can run it now. From here itself, we can run it. So there is one more utility for running it actually. I'm not going to run it now. I'm just show it to you. I'm not running it. You can even pull the actual actions what submit for approval. And then all these things we can give it now. No. <clears throat> and then submit it. Or otherwise, we can run it from internally also. I'm going to go there. I will now go to the home icon. Right click and then duplicate now. <clears throat> Let me go to the procurement. And then we go to the purchase orders. And then from here, we can import it also. I click on it and I'm going to put my import. So click on import orders. So from the load interface file has brought in into the interface tables and then from there, what happens, you cannot do it now. From, from the interface tables, the base tables, you can run it now, fine with that. So you go to the import orders from the navigation cell, fine with that, click on it and then you now fill up everything. Approval action is what, submit for approval. And then you can now say, so no, the remaining are not required, fine with that, click on submit. It will be having a batch number, it doesn't matter, click on submit. I not modified the batch number, I don't know whether it will not succeed or not, I'm not sure about it now. So here it's we can import it now. Go there. And you can view the output now. It's now succeeded actually. If I click on view output. Save it and then have a look at it now. Show. Open it up. A copy of it, close it, and then put it in a word file. <clears throat> now say file new. Now. Paste it away now. So purchase order imported successfully. The message is coming now. And we'll call it import of the stock. Is success actually. <clears throat> 3021 is the purchase order number. Close it now. We will now have a look at the system now. I'll have a look at the system. <clears throat> oh, there. Close it now. So here, you'll now click on done. 302 zone is the purchase order. I'm going to click on it. And then we'll now go to manage orders and have a look at it. Now. The input test two now, and click on search. So 302 zone is the one, is the second import. Fine, it's not coming. So the description is also confined in the open one. And if you click on the attachments, now, click on the note exist, and go there. So notes, First note to supply two, fine, I made a change from uh, The two I have added is now coming. And then I will now see at the line level, the attachment is coming now. Oh, click on it. At the line level also, we have an attachment, fine, click on it now. You know, see line level attachment, fine, line note to sub two is also. Coming. So try to see the attachments also, if we can do attachment, to be great actually, fine, if you go to the details now. And then uh, uh, Vignesh is an exercise for you, fine. You make an attachment on the FBDA template itself and then see whether you are able to get it here. If you succeed, fine. You got a lot of exercises actually, fine. <laughs> you see on the MBDA playlist where to perform an attachment now, fine. Because we have one such requirement on the items uh, image actually. 
they have given a lot of images and then they wanted to upload for certain at least items actually i don't know how people have done it i am not uh, not concerned on this now because i only taught the basics but afterwards other people have done something and then they were even able to import the attachments uh, as a as a image also image file also was we just we can uh, able to attach in item itself is it so is there uh? yeah in the item itself we have a product uh, pim ah ha 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 we can able to add the image in the item itself and here only we have to see it now in the po i don't find which column uh, we can do it now actually so this completes the po import now we can now see the uh, price now find whether click on done and then how about the price the price is now 4 now we have changed it as yes, the price is for different from 3 to 4 i have made it now and it's already changed so the po level we can very well make a change actually now we go for a supplier import now <clears throat> we go for a supplier import we are now given a site 10 actually that is also coming over there now supplier import now, now again we go to docs.org.com <clears throat> and go to the cloud applications and then here you know go to the cloud supplier import so here i have now choose the procurement now go to the procurement and then these are the only uh, things which you can import go to the book, book and then go to the development now books and then go to the development now. so as of now only this many imports are available here so here on the purchasing we have this many imports now three imports and then the sales service requirement we have only one import requisition now and then in the supplier portal they have made it as eight ones now eight different files this is a really a very horrible one actually we even raised a, what's called a sr for this now but they told that this is the way uh, the oracle wanted actually it is not a tab region but there are different files actually so let me go there and then do it now find the first of all i will now import supplier that if i click on import suppliers and then let me go on and click on the supplier import template and then save it now so you can see so supplier import is not supplier is not done after supplier what happens you have to go for address now actually where is the address supplier address has been done now uh, supply import supplier address so supplier address now <clears throat> that is the next template and then afterwards sites now so go to the sites now find import supplier sites now sites and then afterwards site assignments actually so you go there site assignments site assignments i'm making now i'm only going to import these four and then show it to you the remaining are lab exists like what happens uh, supplier attachments business classification and then contacts and then products and services these four are lab exists for you i am now doing the supplier address supplier assignments and then sites and then suppliers only four the four remaining four are lab exists for you to try this one. so done it now fine go that click on it will now start to modify it so we'll now go to the first of all supplier suppliers now fine import suppliers so the first one is supplier address import supplier import fine go open now so let us now make a supplier import now <clears throat> so here uh, i am now uh, enable editing now click on enable editing and then click on enable content also enable content also and then afterwards go there it has got only two tab region fine go that one let me delete all the things now and go there select it all to ed and putting it now fine so let me keep the batch as such now fine go that click on create now and then supplier name i will now say k99 underscore uh, im and then sub underscore 3 i already imported two i think and go that one supplier and then it is not a prospective prospective means we can only send rfqs and codes we cannot make a purchase order remember and e payables has got a routine by which what happens uh, the prospective suppliers can be converted into spend authorized suppliers learn it from ambu about how to do it now ambu will tell you so i am now making it as a spend authorized generally we can make a po now so tax payer and id was not required leave it as a chunk so the first template is on save and the k99 underscore imp sub 3 is the one point uh, commit so this is now done so i will now go to the instructions and cv and then let me generate the csv file click on generate csv file so you want so we will supply list find the click on save click on save so there are two tab regions so two things are coming i will now i will now close it without save now because system will be creating more and more tab regions so when you are closing it please see see that you are not saving it otherwise fine save means it will not work for the next time actually so don't save and then close now so this way you do it now you close the particular order so <clears throat> so if you see supplier level po suppliers inst is the one which is now got created and the zip file is not created so after the supplier import what happens i go for what address import and next is import address import so supplier address is the one we have to wait now so we we'll now go for our address now and we'll click on enable editing and then we'll click on enable contact now so we'll go there go to this place <clears throat> so this is not an update is actually a create now 
So now address I am going to what happens I create it now. So go to the instructions CV and then click on generate CSV and then address will be and then click on save now. <coughs> click on save. Okay. <coughs> so I will now close the file. The second file is now closed. Fine. Go and click on it. You know how I will get it. The address is now gone. Fine. So supplier is inst uh, and then supplier address inst. Fine. So, so after having this is what happens. You now go and import the site actually. Fine. Import supplier uh, import site actually. So we will go to the supplier site imports site import file. We enable this now and then bring it down. Go to the enable content now. So you go there. It has got two tab regions. Fine. Everything else is having one, but here it has got two tab regions. Now go there. Site and go there. Find all TD. So here the batch ID is not there. I am not leaving it. Otherwise, the supplier is what supplier name K ninety nine underscore imp underscore sub underscore three now. Uh, the procurement bu fine it's, a, it's called a, a k99 underscore bu si business unit no uh, address name fine k99 underscore addr underscore 3 now and then the supplier side i will not say uh, site 3 now. site 3 <clears throat> fine is okay sourcing is not okay fine purchasing is just and then uh, payables is no fine primary pay email address Communication method is email, and then I will not put the email fine. Nana dot app sixty gmail dot com. Go there. That's it. Fine. Go there. Nothing else is there. Uh, default pay site. Fine. No remove. Fine. Moist currency is not there. Leave it as is. You try to populate more and more field, and then try to work on it. Now. So this is the third one. I'm doing it, and then it has got one more thing. Fine. Third party pay relationships. Fine. Go there. Fine. No remove the next one now. So here it is the update. Uh, supplier name, supplier site, procurement BU, uh, remit to supplier, any or no fill it. I know how to, why it's required actually third party payment. K and then underscore uh, uh, supplier name is what? Im underscore sub underscore three now. Supplier site is what? Uh, site three, isn't it? Fine. Site three. <clears throat> procurement BU, K and then underscore uh, uh, BU. Yes, I can use this business unit. If you make a mistake, small mistake here and there, also, what happens? It will not be importing it actually. So, default remit to supplier. <clears throat> what is this remit to supplier? Fine. You have got a third party, then only it will be coming now. Fine. I think the whole thing is not required, but I am not sure about whether we have to address name. I am not leaving it now. Fine. From date and to date, I am leaving it. Because I am not going to give a third party payment actually. So, let me leave it as a now. I will click on it. I want to give update and then I will say create now. Not sure about this tab region actually. Come at it and then you go there, click on it and then it will not generate the CSV. You know. <clears throat> the supply side section. Supply side. You know so click on save now. So the first tab region is coming, click on save now. And then next one. All the thing will be going into a zip file actually. Click on okay. All of them will be going into a zip file actually. <clears throat> so you can now see the PO import, uh, the supplier, supplier import, uh, supplier address. Where is the site import? Hmm. Site import template is there, but there is no zip file at all. I don't understand. Ah, okay. Supplier import, supplier, uh, site import. We need not. So there's a site assignments actually. Address import, and supplier import, address import. Supplier site import has to have a what's called a uh, file actually. Uh, you know, go back and then open it up again and then see now. You are able to find only two zip files now. The third zip file is not found now. Oh, let me go on and create it again now. Click on it. It's a supplier site assignment, isn't it? You go to this place now. Supplier sites, basically. And click on generate now. Fine. Let me give my own name now. Fine. K99 underscore uh, supplier underscore site as such. Click on it. I'm not giving a name. Oh God, it has gone to this navigation. The navigation was different actually. That is the reason. Go here. And then here, I will not go to here. Go to here. 
It has not seemed in a different place with it. How come it has uh, got changed actually? Here I will not say go to the PO import. Here it has to be there. So PO supplier import, uh, PO supplier address import. This is the one. This is the, one. This is the, one. This is the supplier side import. And I'm not given a different name. Click on save. And then I will not keep it as a friend. The other tab regions, I'm not going to make any change. Okay. Now, how I have a look at it. Okay. So the third zip file has to come now. <clears throat> PO import. Come on. I don't understand. Is there in the top corner? Oh, 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 yeah, yeah. Supplier site is there. Yeah. Supplier site is there. Uh, uh, yeah, this one. So supplier is here. Supplier site is here. And then supplier address is there. Okay. Three zip files are there. Good, good, good. Correct. So this is all there. Now, what happens? I'll now go for the fourth one now, fourth and final one, which I'm going to do it now. So I'll again go there. The fourth final one is a supplier site assignment, actually. Call a diffusion. And then go to the PO import. Now, what happens? The supplier site assignments. If the site assignment is not given, it's not given. Supply site assignments might open it up. And then let me fill it up now. Uh, there's no open up. No open up. Click on enable editing. And then click on enable content now. And then go there. It's got only one tab region. So let me remove these two things now. Alt D. <coughs> go there. Create a supplier name is what? K99 underscore. <coughs> Uh, imp underscore sub underscore three now. So supplier site is what site three now. <coughs> Procurement buk ninety nine underscore busi business unit. And then the client is what k ninety nine underscore busi business unit. Built to you. Same k ninety nine underscore busi Any mistake, please point out to me. So what else? You won't be having any of here is a mistake now. Underscore. The underscore here also is underscore. So here is all properly done now. Uh ship to location, build to location. I won't give it in time for that. There's a key 99 underscore lock underscore one now. And then there's a key 99 underscore lock. We are given everything on the site assignments now. Site assignments has got this many fields now. Okay. You go there. Lock underscore one. You have put iPhone. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Underscore one. Any other mistakes? Go to the home page, home, and then whatever you go to the instructions, and then whatever they go there. And then they click on what? Generate CSV file for this. Click on generate CSV file. So it's a site assignments clearly. I will now in the PO import only. Click on save now. Then the navy is there. The destination directories are same file. Click on it. Don't save now. Have a look at it now. So you must have four zip files actually in this place now. Uh, we have <coughs> supplier site and then uh, supplier assignments and then supplier address and then uh, supplier. All the four are available here now. And close it. Let us now go there and then import it through the load import info interface now. <clears throat> and go to the place. I don't know. And go to what? Monitor process and submit schedule a new process now. Load interface. Load interface file for import print on okay now. So first the supplier I have to do it. I have to import supplier now. So I had to choose the sub process properly, supplier, then address, then site, and then site assignments. So that way I had to import it now, one by one. Bring it to the interface table. So, so go there, drop it down. So supplier import first. Import suppliers actually. So import supplier bank accounts, all these things are coming. Otherwise, you can even go to the search and then query for it. Now, what is it's called import suppliers. Import percentage. Yes, you can percentage and then query for it now. Import suppliers. So first supplier I had import now. And then go to the data files and then bring the data file now. And click on up, upload. So use your and then what happens? You can do it now. So PO import. So PO suppliers. PO is it suppliers is the one. Suppliers is the one. Click on OK. And then click on. PO is it suppliers. And then click on submit now. <clears throat> so it's running. 
So it will when it is bringing it to the interface tables, it will not fail at all because it will not simply dump it garbage in, garbage out. So by which whatever this uh, bringing it to the interface tables will have no problem at all. Only when you bring it to the base tables, if there is any mistake, whatever will be giving you problem. So load interface is no doing it now and click on it and it will get succeeded. So the second import, fine go click on it. It will not perform the second import, fine go click on it. And then I'm going to do it now. <clears throat> so the second import, so we are now going to do only four import out of the eight actually. So click on search now. We'll say import supplier. So next is what address. So supplier address is the one, import supplier address. Click on okay. Drop it down. I will not choose what. Upload a new file. So we had to choose a supplier address now. Fine. So is a site assignments the supplier one. It is a, this is supplier. This is supplier address. Fine. This is supplier address I have to import now. Click on OK and then click on OK now. And then click on submit. So we can even go for the third one directly. We need not have to wait for this concurrent to complete actually. Okay, go there. Click on OK. So the third one is basically the address afterwards site. You have to go for the site now. Click on search. Import supplier. The site is the one. Click on search. So we have done the uh, supplier, then the address, then the site has to be imported. Import supplier. So you see it's very case sensitive. Even if you put a small s, it's not working. Capitals. So case, I don't think why they have made it case sensitive actually. So go there. So we have to go for supplier sites. Now import supplier sites is the one. I'm going to click on it. So next is site as a site and then upload site as elements. So supplier sites, I'm going to import it and upload a file. Choose a file. So supplier sites. <clears throat> so it is a PO order. The supplier site is here now. Click on open. Click on OK. And then click on submit. So now final one is a site assignments. Now I'm going to show you the process of the okay. site assignments. We are going to go for it now. So there are eight such things are there for supplier. So whatever you want, you have to fill it up and then wait now. The remaining four are lab access for you. I've done only four now. Click on it. And then click on search. And then it is the import supplier. Click on search. It is a site assignments. Import supplier site assignments. I click on okay now. The site assignments and go to it. Click on upload a new file. Click on choose a file now. <coughs> so it is a site assignments. Site assignments is the one. Click on open. <coughs> Click on OK and then submit. So now to bring it to the base tables, it is a different way now. Fine. There is a different way of bringing it now. Let it all run now. So to bring it to the base tables, what you have to do is you have to go there and then do it in a different manner actually. Um, wait for these things to complete now. So, what kind of interface is going to be? <clears throat> okay, not done. Now, to bring it to the base tables, what happens? You go there and then you go to the procurement and then go to the suppliers. Now. So, we can bring it to the base tables by this way. Take a moment. And then in the suppliers, import suppliers. I don't know the concurrence uh, to be run. From the uh, what's called your concurrent program, but you can import the suppliers so from the suppliers area. Go to the import now, and click on it, and then you go there, click on it, and then it will know what uh, import suppliers again. Right? Import suppliers has come now. So go to actions, and then here, what happens? You have to do it one by one actually. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That way, you have to do it now. If you do it in a ulta ulta manner, it will not do properly because suppliers, then address is required, then after site treatment and then site assignments. These four can be done in any fashion. After the four completion, we can do these four in any other order. But this has to be in the same order. Now. You go to the import suppliers now, first one. Go there. And then you can even leave all the parameters as such now. If I click on submit. So we do not submit it. Go there, click on it. And then you can now see this concurrent is not right. The wait now. So supplier is now getting imported. Then address has to be imported on the supplier now. So 
to go on and see. <clears throat> it's running now. It has not succeeded now. Man, I click on done now. And then you will now go on and query the supplier. Man, I click on it. You now go to the manage suppliers and query it now. So it's K99 underscore IMP is sub three. I think something like that. It is underscore IMP. And I click on search now. It has to be supplier. Man, supplier is not visible. Only sub one is visible. What about sub three? We have done sub three, na? That is not visible. Imp sub three. Imp underscore sub underscore three. So click on search now. Maybe we'll not complete all and then come back now. Right. So you know what the import suppliers. You go in actions and then here import supplier address now. So click on submit. So it is accelerated when I click on it and then you know, go to the sites now. <clears throat> Site import. Site has got a error actually. Other has got imported. Now view the output of it now and what is the error now? There is an error on the site now. So it becomes save. So the third party relationship is not imported at all. That's okay. Uh, number of sites not imported one. The, the third party relationship has got a problem now. Uh, uh, what are you saying? Rejection reasons. The value provided is invalid now. So shall I delete it and then uh, do it now? Fine. That way we will not write now. Fine. Because that is not leave, right. leave the third party blank now. Ah, yeah. That is what. Yeah. Let me leave the third party blank now. Fine. Let us not do it now. Fine. So let us not leave the third party blank now. Call it diffusion now. And then go there. We will not go to the PO import now. Fine. Let us not. Uh, supplier sites now. So let us know. Leave the third party blank now. Go there. Let us know. Delete it now. Or delete it. Delete now. <clears throat> go there. So go to this place now. And then click on generate CSV. I will now say it's a K99 underscore site underscore 2 now. What else? I will now bring it to my directory. And then here I will now in the 2. That is I know. There's a common diffusion now. We will import. So it's a K99 site 2 is a 1 now. And the K99 site 2 is the name I give you now. I don't know if there are many things. I will say save. Click on OK now. I will have a look at it now. So it's now coming a site 2 actually. And that is now bring it over there now. Go there. And then let us know. Import supplies now. And now go to the schedule to process. And run this concurrent now. Site 2 let us now bring it now. So. It's, a inter, uh, it's called a load interface. Load interface file to import. Click on it. So site we're not bringing in now. Go there. Click on search. Then here I will say import process. What a, a import supplier. Click on search now. Import supplier sites. No, import supplier sites. Click on OK now. And then bring it over there now. Click on OK. Choose a file. Site 2. But we already have another file. Now find what it will do. I don't understand. This is also there. This is also there. So we, we will have any option to choose only this for import or I don't know. Sub tool. Site. You, have, you had a purge option. No, no. In that. Oh. Uh, oh, oh. Here, here, the bear is the bear. The purchase, 
Yeah. So. Okay. Well, when you showed the eight, uh, yeah, when, where you showed that eight options, we ah, ah, had ah, one per option. Okay, okay, fine. I'll know that command. So click on submit command. This guy has got everything yesterday itself, yar. <laughs> So you saying while importing it, we have a purge also. Oh, after purge only we had to import it, na? Fine. Either way, it will be also purging no, it. Well, we should be able to see whether uh, we are able to select a particular file and. Ah, 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 ah. Good, good, good. So let it complete now, fine. While importing it, whether we can selectively purge or not, we will not see now. So it is all completed, succeeded now, fine. The second one get succeeded now, fine. Now I go there. So in the actions, we have a purge supplier interface records. Click on the purge supplier interface records, and then the interface tables is purge records is what uh, rejected. Oh, se se select the site information. One second, here the supplier site now supplier sites now. Here I will now choose what the rejected now. Yes. Rejected. I have to choose. Click on rejected, and then click on submit. Rejected. I am purging it now, so that I will now go on and refresh it now. I am purging the rejected now. Supplier sites and purging the reject. So that when I import it, it has to succeed. Good, good, good. So we are learning new things also. It is not succeeded. Now we go there and then bring the import supplier sites now. And then I take on some. This time it has to come up. Ready. Running. Hey, come on, come succeed it. Oh God, again here. <laughs> click on the click on the view output now. Uh, report is not coming up. <clears throat> what is it? Five zero six report now. Here, there is no error at all. Supplier sites not imported is one now. You now see the reason now. Okay. The value provided is one. So, what I do is I will now purge everything and then bring it in now. Fine. I think it is not purged at all properly. Uh, site 3, the value provided is invalid. So, let me purge everything and then afterwards bring it in now. I'll click on import suppliers. Go to actions and then go to per supplier interface. And then I will now go to the supplier sites now. Supplier sites. And then I will not record all, I will not purge now. It is not purging. And then afterwards I will now bring it again. Now. It's not succeeded. Go there, click on it. And then I will now go to the second new process. Click on OK now. <clears throat> Just purge it all in supplier sites. <clears throat> Go there. Import processes supplier sites. Import supplier. So supplier sites. Okay. Bring the value model. So click on upload a new file. So site two now. Okay. And click on okay. No, it is saying there is some data issue with that vendor name and uh, so I think you will get an error again okay. oh, oh, oh. because it is saying that uh, the data which is provided is not correct. So the validation fields in the field is five. Well, so, and, uh, in which place in the import area or in the, in this? No, the values we have given no, in that uh, template. Oh. The value is not matching with what is there in the system like your uh, business unit <laughs> name or the supplier name. On the second tab you are saying on the third party. Not the third party. Uh -huh. in, the sub, in the site information itself, whatever values we have given, it is not consistent with the earlier supplier details or the business unit details. Oh. The data is not correct. That's what the error was. Is it so? Okay, okay. That was the error. Okay, in that case, what happens? They go to the what? supplier sites, no fine PO, supplier sites, no fine. You we'll see what is the problem here. What is the supplier sites only? Uh, oh, God. This is now got. Saved actually. Fine, this one. 
So something has got saved and then this is not correct at all. This is a supplier site input. Okay, this is one. Okay, okay, correct. So, so here, if you see, there is some error he's saying. You know, I create imp sub three business unit is okay. Address three address underscore three only I give one na. Site three. address is no, it should not be a problem. Uh, address the name. Supply name and the business unit values should be in sync. The, those are the two things. Sub three, site three. Email is okay, but I will not see the address number. K ninety nine address three whether it is okay or not. I will click on it. I will not open it up now. I will not go to that. P O suppliers. P O suppliers. Address underscore three. Uh, I will not. Oh God. This is not getting saved actually. Okay, it has not saved actually. I want to do some other one. Pure suppliers. Uh, this is the one. Pure suppliers. Let's put a pure suppliers side east. Pure suppliers. There will be one more file by this name. Pure suppliers. Pure is it suppliers? Address list is there. Site assignment is there. Pure purchase orders. Okay. Ah. Uh, because a business unit, a, business unit, can you check in the front end what is a business unit? No, this is a, a one. No, fine. Business unit is okay. Can K99 underscore business underscore unit. This is the name for it. Pivo is it suppliers has to come now. Fine. Pivo is it suppliers INST has to come now. One more file. Because this is a system created file actually. Uh, and then uh, my original file, where it is now. You will see in the bottom one. Pivo. Supplier input, yes. Supplier input template. So I know one of the few supplier input template now. So I am just some And then I might have given a site name here. Site name is not there. No, see the address one now. This is a supplier uh, file. Supplier file. Okay, so on the address file you have to see, na? You have to see on the for, for me, I have a doubt with the business unit. Uh -huh. No, open up the this thing now. Fine. So address name is K99 address underscore three. Address underscore under ADDR underscore three only. K99 imps of three fine. Everything is okay. So what is the problem? <clears throat> K99. Malcolm. Mm. Malcolm, I have a meeting with Ramya now. Okay. 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 So okay, one more thing. Okay. Uh, the next is training session will be starting on 25th actually. Fine. Now we are completing this now. And then next week you have to practice it and then we will be meeting on 25th of May actually for order management actually. Okay. Uh, Malcolm. Hey, uh, Ram okay. Prasad. Ram Prasad. Uh, fine sir. Fine sir. 25th okay. of May we will be meeting. Here, okay sir. Site, site space 3 everything is small in the address one. So you will see. Site is not asking you. Come on. Where exactly are you saying? <laughs> so you were saying correctly. That's something you told now very correctly. I have done the import or what? I have not done the import. No, no you have not done the import. You can do the import now. Okay. Uh, you know, see, there is a come, I will not leave it to Vignesh. Then... Okay. Well, I have not go to the import process. Click on search now. <clears throat> and then the supplier underscore IMP percentage. So click on supplier site import. Now. Again, small letter percentage IMP percentage and then click on search. Sub import supplies. Other, other yeah. <laughs> import supplier. Go there. Click on here. Now choose the file site two. You have to choose one. Click on it. Now choose the site two now. Well, okay, otherwise, we'll leave it. Some mistakes are there.
be the same way. One mistake anywhere here and there, Aubrey, and you see, you are now importing hundreds of suppliers, Aubrey, how difficult it will be. <laughs> Again, almost the same error is not coming in. Attribute vendor name on the supply site is not showing on this one. Vendor ID. So, vendor name and vendor ID it is unable to create actually. Imp sub 3. Supplier is this now, and then there is one vendor name is there. We now see what is the vendor name now. So, you go to the supplier address import, supplier site import now. Supplier site import template. There is a vendor name now. Let me see that one. We go there. He is now saying vendor name is not matching. Supplier name is there. No, it's crazy. Only this much is there on this one. There is no vendor name at all. Click on the show additional attributes. No? Huh? Show so there, is, there is a show additional attributes. Additional attributes. Now, we go there. Supply site new is okay. Okay, go there. No new communication is coming. Thanks. Oh, English, you will be having a ready made one, na? and successful ones with you. No, it's another level. I don't find any vendor name here now. Plenty of thumbs are coming now. Better than you search in uh, control F. Ah, okay, I'll not do that. Control F and then uh, vendor name now. And PND or vendor. And then click on find next now. You couldn't find anything at all. Ah, something somewhere. <laughs> You don't find this. I was saying vendor name is uh, not matching it. Vendor name it was getting, no, no? vendor ID it was not able to populate. Ah, here there is no ID at all. Just go back to that file, ah. uh, log file. It was showing uh, vendor name it was showing value, vendor ID was blank. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's on. So here, Wait, vendor uh, name. No value. Vendor ID. Okay. The the provided is invalid, it is not saying. The value rec value is required, you must provide a value. So, when the underscore import underscore supplier underscore three. The value provided is invalid, rejection reason. Attribute is matter name. There is a supplier name, that is what you are saying now. Import supplier three. Come, it is improper, it is very correct actually. Ah, oh, God. So import yeah. option is new I have given now. I have to give what not new actually. Maybe I think I made a mistake there now. But import option should not be new now. And go there. So click on uh, what's called, uh, and now go to the import suppliers. So I will now make a change on this now. I go to suppliers now. I am trying to make a new one. I go there, click on it. And then I will now say all now. Let me make a change to all and then click on submit now. You means it must have created something or something like that, and then afterwards it's not trying to populate on this. Is again an error now. So we'll now give it done, and then we'll now query the supplier whether it has come or not. And go there, click on it, and then go and query it now. So we'll now go to the managed suppliers and then query it now. So it's k99 underscore imp underscore sub underscore three now. So whether the supplier has got created or not, it has not created also. Somewhere some mistake. Because of which, what happens is not happening. Well, then, fine. The, this is the method actually. Fine. So, we understood the method. So, something is a mistake somewhere. We will now see later. Okay. Fine. But then, That's fine. Okay. We will now capture one. I hope that uh, uh, the sessions on uh, procurement were interesting and informative for you. <clears throat> yeah. Yes, sir. Thank you. And then we will okay, meet on twenty uh, fifth now. Find twenty fifth Monday for the order management lecture. Bye. Yeah. Okay, sir. Okay, thank you. Bye.